Hello again class and welcome to Miss Bullock's Flipped Classroom. Today's lesson is going to be on telos, logos, ethos, and pathos. So today's uh, objectives are going to be one, I can learn about telos, two, I can learn about logos, three, I can learn about ethos, and four, I can learn about pathos. Those objectives will eventually move us to where we can identify telos, logos, ethos, pathos, analyze their effects on arguments, and evaluate arguments using them. All of those we'll do in class, that's why they're under this squiggly line. Now, I know a lot of you were saying, oh, but Miss Bullock, we learned about ethos, pathos, logos last year. Yes, we did. However, we will be going more in depth with it this year. The first thing we need to talk about is telos. Telos is purpose. It is the author or speaker's purpose. In persuasion, it's important to have a strong purpose. So the question that you might be asking yourself when trying to locate the telos of a piece would be, what is the author or speaker's purpose? What are they trying to get me to agree with? Now we'll move on to logos. Now, logos is the appeal to logic. Logos is the logic that is used to support a claim. It is also facts and statistics that are used to back up a claim. There are two basic kinds of reasoning in logos. The first is inductive reasoning, and it goes from small to large, from a small, singular concept to a large, broad generalization. The second kind is deductive reasoning, which goes from large to small. It goes from a large premise, concept, or idea to a singular, small um, application of that concept. So let's do a little bit more with inductive and deductive reasoning. We'll start with inductive reasoning. Again, small to large. Inductive reasoning takes specific information and uses it to make a broader generalization. An example of this would be, the water at the beach has always been about 75 degrees in July. It's July. The water will be about 75 degrees. That seems really good and amazing and wonderful and you're thinking, yay, inductive reasoning, I can use it forever. But you have to be careful. Look for the caution signs here. Not all inductive reasoning is always valid. An example that would be wrong would be, George is a grandfather. George is bald. Therefore, all grandfathers are bald. Not all grandfathers are bald. Mine is balding, but he has a comb over, so he's not quite bald. Not yet. Hmm. So that one doesn't work. Let's move forward into deductive reasoning. Now again, deductive reasoning is going to go from large concept or idea, a premise if you will, to a specific application of that premise. Okay, so it takes a general premise, which is an idea, a fact, a concept, and it uses it to draw a specific conclusion. Here's an example. All dogs have a good sense of smell. Murphy is a dog. Murphy has a good sense of smell. That's accurate. But again, we must be careful because not all deductive reasoning is valid. Here's an example of one that is wrong. If the premise is wrong, then the conclusion will be wrong. So we'll see that here. When it rains, the grass gets wet. The grass is wet. It must have rained. Yes, maybe, but there could be other reasons. So this is not a valid conclusion. What are some other reasons the grass might be wet? Maybe dew? Maybe someone had a sprinkler out? Hmm. Maybe someone's washing the car. All of those show that this statement is not valid. Let's next move to ethos. Ethos is the appeal to credibility, okay? 
Ethos is based on the credibility and reliability of the author and speaker. Okay, this is not necessarily just his or her information, but also who he or she is. So, is the author an expert? Have they interviewed experts? Does the author have a degree? Does the author have any experience? Does the author have any authority, any research, any evidence to back up that claim? What about statistics? Do they use language well or are they having a lot of problems with their grammar, spelling, mechanics, that kind of thing? Are they easy to understand or are their sentences so long that in some way you get lost in the meaning? So you'll see here in our little thought bubble, the thing to keep in our mind the whole time is do we trust the author or speaker? Why or why not? Last, but definitely not least, is pathos, which is the appeal to emotion. Pathos uses emotional language. It uses vivid language. It uses numerous sensory details. So it's going to look at those five senses that we have. The author or the speaker creates emotions using words. We've all had something that, a speech that has brought us to maybe feel hope or anger or happiness or real sadness. Okay? Oftentimes they use a story in order to help that and they recreate the situation. And of course here are our little emoticons to remind us this is all about the emotions. Now, when I say last but not least, it is because this is often considered the strongest persuasive kind of technique. Well, thank you very much. I hope you took good notes. Don't forget, study your vocabulary, and we will see you in class soon. To